Hey guys, welcome to the second video in my kata series. This kata is high on Nidan, that you will learn at red belt level. It has 26 moves with Kyaizet moves 11 and 26. Once again, I'll have the move number, technique and stance written on the screen. This kata is a big step up in difficulty from Haiyan Shodan, so it's very important to pay close attention to the techniques I'm using. So the first move, one arm acts like an agiyuki and the other like a hai ichiyuki. The official names for these are tatayuki and haiwanuki. Secondly, the right hand makes urazuki and the left nagashiyuki. Make sure the back of your left hand is pointing outwards and the back of your right hand is pointing forwards. Thirdly, your right hand comes back to your hip and your left performs yokozuki. This is then repeated on the other side. So a couple points with these moves. Make sure on the first move you can see between your hands and you're not looking behind your hands. They should also be at right angles. Here are some demos of what it shouldn't look like. For the second and third moves, try not to hunch your shoulders and really keep them down the whole time. Also note how my elbow is very tucked in on the third move, so much so you can see it from the side. The seventh move of the kata is a half step up to a kick, so called yokere kiyagi, with a yuraken with your right hand. I'd say this kick is the hardest move of the kata due to its coordination. Make sure both your hands and foot finish at the same time and you're not leaning over. Some people tend to let their yuraken go too far and swing out wildly. Try to keep it in line. Also make sure to recover your leg so you don't just drop. Following this is three shujukis. Make sure to keep your shoulders down and point with your preparation hand. We then kiai on a nukute. Make sure you don't fold your left hand down too early and that your arms and legs finish at the same time. After the kiai, you turn into four shujukis like the end of high and shodan with the second and fourth being 45 degrees. The next move, you step across into front stance and uchiki with your right hand. Your hips here should be turned more than square, um, so really try and get them round. Make sure the block isn't too high or too low, your fist should be at shoulder height. When you kick, make sure you stay low and don't stand up. Keep your whole upper body exactly the same as we don't want any chicken wings happening. When you land into the punch, make sure your fist and legs finish at the same time. This is all repeated on the other side, making sure you prepare before your hip moves. The next tricky move in this kata is Morotuki. For this, we need to be making sure we aren't swinging into it and allowing our fist to swing to the side. This is largely a forward technique. Try not to bring your hand back to your hip before you move. The technique should go via your hip and not stop. This will prevent you from twisting like this, which is not what you want to be doing. This is then followed by two Gadamburais and Uchikis with the uchiukis being at 45 degrees. Once again, just like in Shodan, please try not to have your fist behind your elbow as it's weak. The second ki is the final move. Okay, so that's the end of the kata, but I have a few other pointers. So here I'm demonstrating the correct foot position for the first kick, the um, yukigiri kiyagi. We don't want it to be heel first like Kikomi, or toes first like Mayageri. We want the edge of your foot to be like a knife and to swing up. Notice how my hip rises with the kick as I push into it. Overall, this kata is much harder than Haiyan Shodan technique-wise, but also has a lot of familiar moves. As always in Shotokan, really make sure you are staying low the whole time and keeping your shoulders down, especially on the kicks near the end. Make sure your head is staying the same level and not bobbing up and down. I hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time for High and Sandan.